Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. I'm with Dr. Bern Freelander. We're going to be talking about all things health today, ranging from collagen, mitochondrial function, sunlight, anti-aging techniques, ways to improve your athleticism and human performance and recovery. Excited to welcome Dr. Bern Freelander to the show. Dr. Bern, how are we doing? Thank you. I appreciate it, Justin. I'm doing great. Excellent. Well, what are you up to today? So we always kind of chat a little bit about collagen and mitochondria and, and anything that's more cutting edge. Anything particular that you're reading about or you're studying about recently? Well, you know, <clears throat> I've been studying quite a bit about, uh, you know, I got into the uh, mitochondria because uh, of I wanted to understand more about how we got here. Who are we? What are we? You know, how did we start life on the planet? And what were the key elements that created life for all of us? And so <clears throat> I think uh, once I gravitated 40 years of <clears throat> knowledge, I've learned that, you know, uh, everything is mitochondria, the organelle that produces energy in every single cell. And this energy is who we are. It keeps us going it, mentally, physically. Uh, we sleep better when we have a better function. We have less diseases when we have a, 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 our mitochondria functioning optimum. So, I, you know, I started, and I've always been a sun person since the eight, uh, late 70s, 80s, playing soccer, track and field, swimming outdoors. So, but um, I spend more time where I go out in every single morning and I ground myself and, and look at the sun at the east. And I try to sun gaze every single morning. And then in the afternoon between 10 and Three, I try to get as much sun, two, three, four hours, whatever I can, uh, to get more UV light in my body and, you know, optimize my melon, which is the uh, pigmentation of the skin, you know, which we need. The darker you are, the healthier you are, actually. And if you look at people's eyes, if they are brown pupils, that means they have a lot of melanin in their body. If it's right. more hazel or blue, you have less, and so you don't function as well. So I wanted to find out what is the source that gave us the energy and the power and created us, and I found out it's the sun and mitochondria together. Mm. Once we had the sun at the optimum levels 600 million years ago, uh, we created the life. In, we created uh, mammals. We, all the living systems were developed because of this function of sunlight and creating this organelle mitochondria. And that started encapsulating and developing in all of us. And even plants have it. So I think once I started uh, realizing, get away from computers, cell phones, video games, um, you know, 5G, 3, uh, 4G, 3Gs, get away because we operate on a certain frequency every day. And that's the Schumann Hertz. You know, the Schumann Hertz is 7.83 Hertz. And that's what we need uh, to maintain in our body. And that's created by the hypothalamus, thalamus in our brain. And the earth resonates at that frequency because of uh, all the energies from neutrinos, from the sun hitting the planet and creating that frequency. And today we're off that frequency because everything is in the millions to billion cycles per second. Computers, you know, radiation, um, Wi-Fi, cell phones, video games, indoor lightings, you know, all that create damage to our brain and our body and then we don't operate on blue light we operate on red and uv light like jack cruz says and he's absolutely 100 percent right you know i needed to learn the science to understand what i've been doing for 
30, 40, 50 years now. So the average now person's got to be inside though, right? So what yeah. can they do to adjust? Like for me, I have like low blue light, low flicker monitors. I try to have full spectrum lighting. Right. I have windows, open the windows door, try to use apps on my phone to keep the blue light down. I wear right. glasses at night that block blue light. So what can people do if they have to work, they're in this office environment? What are things they can do at home to help? Well, one of the things they can always do is get up first thing in the morning and get outside and look at the sun 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or walk mm. 5, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes. Get the circadian function back. Get the 7.83 hertz back and that comes from the sun. And then second is go outside in the afternoon. Uh, don't wear sunglasses or sunscreens and Expose your body to sunlight. You can do that, you know, between 10 and 3 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon and try to get as much sun as you can. If you have to have lunch, eat outside. If you have to uh, just get away from the office for half an hour, an hour. Most of my patients are learning this. I've got them all at least getting outside in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening some of them start taking walks outside so they're still getting some mm. sunlight. Those are the big things we can do. Uh, try to get incandescent lighting in yep. your, inside, remove LED, fluorescent, halogens, all kinds of lighting that are damaged. So and is there a special kind of light bulb that you like? Is it just a full spectrum light bulb? Is that all you're I looking lo for? Yes, a full spectrum sunlight uh, works the best where it produces the frequencies of the sun and incandescent is also uh, more natural. It has a full spectrum lighting in incandescent LEDs and fluorescents and all that are now uh, artificial lighting that can offer, uh, you know, all, mm -hmm. offer us a uh, damaging effect in, in how we, absorb light in the body and if you don't want to block this important tool we have is the skin and that skin absorbs the energy from the sun and it helps with regeneration and repairing and healing and reversing uh, many conditions that we have today and you know weight gain all of that diabetes all it is is that we're um blue light damage and that blue light increases the glucose and the sugar consumption in the body. So the high glucose comes from only blue light damage. It has nothing to do with the food. And that's absolutely 100% that what Jack Cruz is saying. Well, is I, I would push back on that a little bit because I have patients do functional glucose tolerance testing where they get their blood sugar meter. Where's mine right here? A little keto mojo. And then I'll yeah. have them tested fasting and then we'll do a one, two, three hour reading right after their meal and we'll adjust their meals and we'll see significant, you know, drops in their glucose by just, you know, ex ex pulling out their flowers and grains and pastas and swapping it for leafy green vegetables or just adding five or 10 minutes of walking after a meal outside. Well, I'll see a 10, 20 um, MG per DL drop in blood sugar with just that. So it does make sense that the carbohydrate and food does get into the bloodstream and then that does impact blood sugar. Would you agree or not? Yes, I agree that the carbs today are damaging to all of us because if you go back uh, 500, 600 million years ago, our animals, mammals did not eat grains. They were no. eating proteins and the fat they can get from the protein. That's it. You know, it wasn't five to 8,000, 10,000 years ago we discovered all these uh, carbohydrate fruits and that we started getting sick because of that, you know, because it wasn't meant for us to make uh, mitochondria function. And learning all this, that mitochondria function is produced by fats and proteins, that's because the elimination of deuterium in the mitochondria is so important, it speeds up the ATP phase of the enzyme in the mitochondria so we get more energy. And so, yeah, and you said going outside and walking a little bit, 
they're getting sunlight. So that's also yeah. helping with the glucose. So eliminating carbs definitely is important because we weren't designed for that. But at what uh, point is sunlight too much? Because, you know, I've seen this picture. Someone did a, a blog post on this years ago where I saw it. They're like, oh, well, sunlight, you know, more is better as long as you don't burn. But I've seen images of migrant workers who have darker skin. They never burn. But 5, 10 years, 20 years of being a migrant worker, you can see massive aging and massive collagen break down in their skin, even though they have very dark skin. So at some point, there is breakdown to the collagen with this excess amount of sun. Now, of course, you know, migrant workers, that's the extreme, right? Yeah. 10 hours, but, at, and that's someone with darker skin already. So the melanin is the natural UV blocking agent. But at what point is it too much? Is it just, I'm lighter skin. I came from Northern European descent. At what point is it just avoiding burns? But even people that don't burn still will have collagen degradation at some point. What's yeah. that threshold? Well, I, I see what you're saying and, and true. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in the sun almost all, all day. I can be in the sun four to seven, eight hours, and everybody says, burn. You don't burn. You, you're you don't building up cancer. a solar callus. You're building yes. up a solar callus. But even these migrant workers have that. At some point, there is collagen degradation. So, I mean, I know, okay, you get better fatty acids. You get the polyunsaturated out, that those fatty acids and bioflavonoids do provide extra SPF protection. But where's that fine line there? Yeah, I mean, that's why you get out in the morning. First thing in the morning, you build your, your, your body. You build it so that you don't get burned and you don't age your skin. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other thing is do not cover your skin up with, you know, even clothes can cover the skin up and you're not getting the full function of the sun. You know, that's the problem. And then sunscreens were... Uh, are you know billions of dollar industry that's creating a lot of the damage that happens in the skin you know we don't know mind grain workers what they put on the skin either and what their diet is either you know so if if they consume more protein and fat and they consume more collagen i think they're protecting their skin much more mm -hmm. uh, i don't find that's a problem uh, with a lot of people I know who are sun worshipers and they're outdoors all day long. But when I see them covering and putting sunscreen, I go, oh, my God, they're doing everything damaging to the skin. Well, and let's that's talk what about that. Let, let, let's hit that vein. I mean, I think there's a couple different avenues of, of sunscreen, right? I think the 80s and 90s and even 70s, most sunscreen only blocked out UVB. It didn't even touch UVA or C. So people weren't getting the burns, but they were still creating lots of collagen damage. Number yes. one. Number two, most of those sunscreens were chemical blockers. They weren't physical blockers. So they had right. oxymethoxycinamate, lots of cancer causing compounds. I think if there's the better sunscreens today that are zinc based, that are cleaner, zinc's a nutrient. And as long as you mitigate the other junk in there and you're using a physical deflectant where the zinc is there and it's reflecting the sun like a mirror versus a chemical-based sunscreen like the oxymethoxycinamate or the oxybenzone. That's more of an absorber. And, and those, I think, are the, the big cancer-causing ones. And so I think we have to kind of put them in those two categories. Thoughts on the different types of sunscreen? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, you know, I've never in my – since my 20s – playing uh, soccer and track and field and coaching three Olympic teams and NFL teams and NBA teams, did I ever use anything on my skin than what, you know, I have. And I went outdoors and never had the problem. Uh, you don't want to block anything from what the sun produces, okay, because it is providing the energy the body needs, and when you block something like that, you're going to get more blue light damage, okay? The body knows it never used sunscreen, you know, uh, 300,000 years ago, 200,000 years, 100,000, mm -hmm. 65,000 years. It's been more lately. And look at Australia. They're the capital of, uh, of what's called 
uh, cancers, you know, skin cancer of anybody in the world. And they block themselves completely with clothes and, and sunscreens and glasses. So they're, uh, they're, not, they're damaging their body the most. And I think if you eat a good diet, which, you know, uh, Jack doesn't think that's a big problem, is that if you don't eat carbs and drink alcohol and smoke, your skin is going to be healthier, even if you're outdoors more. I think it's, you know, trying to avoid the damaging effects of foods, but being outdoor more often and creating the body to build up against all these things, um, the skin never is going to age or, you know, I've never seen, I've seen people outdoors have gorgeous skins, especially those people that live uh, in South America or Mexico. I, you know, my, my ex-wife, her mother was from uh, El Salvador. So she always had a great skin. My ex-wife always had a great skin. And they were so, you know, used to being outdoors all their life that they never really aged that badly, you know. And when you start putting topical things on there, I think you're going to see more problems in aging and cancer and things like that. I, I think, you know, if you use coconut oil or something like that topically, that's fine, you know. Um, I use butter, ghee butter sometimes uh, just to moisturize my skin because it can get dry. So I use saturated fats more than anything else on my skin. And I feel that at least I'm coating the, the skin so it can also have the right cholesterol, which is sulfate cholesterol, we need for vitamin D production. And that comes from the sun only. We need cholesterol, but we need the sun to sulfate, and that's how we get the proper vitamin D in our body. And the vitamin D protects the, uh, the melon in our mitochondria, and that's its function mainly as a protective mechanism. And rather than what people think is an immune modulator, which it is, but it is more protective vitamin D than anything else. It, it, it protects uh, the skin against aging and all of that. And we need that. But we so here, here, here's my take. Here's my take, right? Because I, I try to take the data and then I look at examples in society and say, what, what do the examples tell us? So I think sun's great. I think earlier, earlier or later hours is better when the UV is not quite as strong. I think my, my general take is don't get burned. If you're burning, you're creating some kind of damage or inflammation. I think you have to look at the amount of – I have less melanin in my skin than someone who's African-American. We know melanin is natural yeah. sunblock, right? So right. I, think, I think it's wise to build up your, you know, your minimal urethemal dose. That's the amount of time for your skin to get pink and then build up from that. Ideally, don't get burned. But I see, and I, and I know the diet and the fatty acids and the antioxidants that you eat plays a role in natural sunblock protection. But I see articles like this where you have a truck driver and he drove trucks for 28 years and the left side of his face is the driver's side. That's exposed to the yeah. sun. He never got burned. And you can see his left side of the face versus the right side of the face. You can see massive amount of collagen degradation on the left side versus his right side. And so we know that the sun is doing something to damage collagen over time. Now, Maybe his diet was junky, right? Maybe he wasn't taking collagen. Maybe he, maybe the fatty acids were off. But we know that there is something that the, with the sun and collagen degradation, there is a connection with that. So that's my big thing is just look, telling patients out there, people that are listening, find that dose for you. Don't get burned, but you know, work into it. But just also be mindful. If you're in the sun five, six hours a day, I mean, there could be some destruction of collagen that could set you on a path for accelerated aging. That's my take on that. No, I agree. I mean, everything is moderation and exposure. Correct exposure minimizes your problems. So you expose your body slowly so you don't do it all at once. And like I recommend said. topically afterwards, after being out in the sun for a while, I'll come back in. I'll use I'll, a gentle cleanser and I will put emu oil on my face. I found mm -hmm. that many of the best burn victim units – in the country, they use emu oil 
for their mm-hmm. burn patients. That's it. They don't nothing crazy. Emu oil is an amazing fatty acid, very high in vitamin K, and they use yeah. it in the best burn victim units. You just got to make sure it's AEA certified because most are cut with canola or soy oil. They aren't real. They're knockoffs. So you have to make sure you get one that's AEA certified. So they send it to a lab and they actually make sure it's the real deal. But emu oil, at least topically after the fact, I think is a wonderful way to to, to provide good fatty acid support for that skin to heal after the fact. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I use emu oil back in the 80s, 90s as a delivery system. Yep. You know, and it's excellent for its fatty acids. And it has a strong anti-inflammatory mechanism too. Um, You know, I think uh, vitamin E, all these things are necessary. And that's why I like butter, uh, grass-fed butter, ghee, and occasionally coconut oil. They're all great for cosmetic purposes too i think so yeah, I, I, I love the emu because it's not a saturated fat and you feel it absorb in where coconut you just kind of look shiny as heck all day but yeah it's a good yeah. fatty acid still good healing properties for sure yeah i agree yeah. okay good so anything anything else you want to hit about people with the sun mitochondrial benefits anything else you want to touch upon that area before we move on to collagen Well, again, I think the uh, exposure to sun every single day. You know, somebody asked me if I was to create a clinic again, and like I had in the 80s and the 90s where people came in, I used magnetic, you know, I used magnetic healing and light therapy way back in the 70s on athletes. I I somehow knew that, you know, these things were necessary for healing. And I said, if I was to open up a healing clinic, it would be outside somewhere, you know, somewhere where I can expose my patients to more sunlight and apply what I know today. I would do that rather than be indoors where I'm not really healing the person anymore, you know. And I tell my patients or clients or people that I talk to on a daily basis is get outside and put your, um, you know, your hamstring or your glutes or whatever is ailing you, whatever injury you have, why don't you expose it in the sun and let sun start beginning its process for healing, regeneration. So it sounds like if there was ever a public health epidemic, it would be a pretty bad idea locking people inside, not getting fresh air and sun. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that's that's what happened. (laughs) That's how they. That sounds something that happened recently. We'll let the the listeners kind of connect the dots. (laughs) And that's why there was a lot of cardiovascular diseases. And I had two of my best friends uh, I lost to cancer because they uh, they isolated themselves Mm -hmm. indoor with the computer working. Uh, from home, indoors, not never going outside because they were worried about the virus. And I lost two people from cancer. And, you know, I, I wish, you know, they understood that being outdoors is more important than indoors and isolation. And the UV light is natural. It is the only thing that helps against viruses, everything. We use UV light to uh, knock out skin cancers and skin yep. disorders back in the 80s when I was working with dermatologists. You know, so they knew something and they were using nature. I used UVC light when I was working with uh, Royal Rife's family in the Rife technology. We, have, we used UVC lamps instead of what he'd used, which was more profound healing and regeneration and getting rid of, uh, you know, diseases that way. So naturally they knew something, these scientists that I worked with that was very important in how nature really has the answer to everything. And yeah, and if, if you look at the, 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 the person that won the, the Nobel Prize started the 20th century, Niles Ryberg Finson, he yeah. – basically got the Nobel prize for using phytotherapy, light therapy for lupus and other types of diseases. Yes. And and, and then you can look at the hospital data. I think pre and post world war one, they were taking some of these wounded warriors and putting them on 
the roof of the hospitals and letting them get full sunlight exposure with their wounds. And they healed amazingly and had less infection. So we know there's definitely a connection with different autoimmune conditions and even just injury and wound healing in general. Right. I wouldn't recommend it for cosmetically, for, for healing wounds cosmetically, because you can cause some some uh, hypo pigmentation. But if you're trying to heal a wound and not get infected from a, you know, uh, from a, a wound standpoint, it, it's definitely a good option. Not yeah, so. I agree. Uh, you know, again, uh, nature has the answers. Mm -hmm. And if we don't use what nature provided us, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of million years ago, you know, um, they created life. So everything was perfect then, you know, the nutrients, the, uh, the uh, hydrogen, the oxygen, the carbon was all natural. And it was at the you know highest exposure at that time, so life could be started again. You know that's what we needed. So yeah, so nature doesn't make mistakes. Oh, I and agree. Yep. Makes and, a lot of sense to me. Yeah, and we're do and you know today um, man is making a lot of mistakes in the way they're doing things, and they're wondering why there's so many more incidents of illness than ever before. And why more men having libido problems? I mean, mm -hmm. everybody asks me, Vern, what can I do for, you know, increasing my libido and how women can get pregnant? You know, it's a big concern because uh, if you see men are all, if they put their laptops, you know, their computers right over their, you know, the their labs. Their, yeah. yeah. Their, their That's agendas. what happens. Not good. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree. So, Not to mention, we live in a toxic soup. We have yeah. put everything in plastics, which has BPA yeah. and phthalates. And even if you're like, oh, I got a BPA-free bottle, it's like, well, Google, BPA, Google BPS, right? There's yeah. other plastic derivatives that are just as bad. Or look yeah. at the, the Roundup or the pesticides. Or look at the fact that water filtration still doesn't get micro levels of pesticides and plastics out of the water. You can go yeah, Google and atrazine, atrazine, and Texas water supply. Half of Texas's water supply, according to a Texas Tribune article, 2019, half has above the EPA limit for atrazine. And atrazine, I mean, you can go look at the atrazine UC Berkeley frog study in 2007. Yeah. Where that, that causes all kinds of hormone disruption. And we're in this toxic soup of plastics, pesticides, uh, Roundup. Um, we have microplastics, junky water. Right. All of these things. Right? And then obviously, then once you over carb it, you're, you're carving it up too much processed grains or sugar. Now we're upregulating aromatase that causes testosterone to go downstream to estrogen. And then that builds more fat cells. And then your fat cells become an exocrine gland where they actually produce estrogen themselves. So the fatter you get, the, the fatter you get because the more estrogen your fat cells make. Yeah. And then also you got to understand uh, – when you uh, have blue light damage and you're incre uh, decreasing mitochondria activity, your metabolism slows down and so you expand, you get bigger and fatter. And you look at people that are indoors mostly, uh, they're overweight, you know, and they have issues, you know. Um, you go to, I have a lot of uh, clients from India now coming to me and I'm looking at them. And they're all hired by Amazon and Google and Facebook to work indoors. And they, they're wondering why they're having obesity problems, diabetes problems. And, and one guy had a stroke uh, from working at, indoors, and he's from India. And that's because he gave up his traditional light that he had in India, which is predominantly mostly light and why they're darker people. He's working indoors and he's damaging himself. And so he's losing mitochondrial energy and why he's having all these problems. You know, the heart is predominantly mitochondria. The brain is predominantly mitochondria. So you're going to see more problems in those two areas. 100%. So. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now, collagen is another big topic. We've talked about this before. People aren't getting connective tissue exposure. I mean, maybe if they're doing bone broth and they're doing a crock pot or an Instabot and putting full bones in there and getting that nutrients out, but we don't get a lot of collagen exposure 
most people, you know, get boneless, skinless chicken breast. So they avoid the, they avoid those cuts of meat that have the connective tissue on there. Right. And so right. collagen supplementation, I think is essential. More and more studies and meta-analyses are coming, coming back with data showing that collagen helps with bones, with joint soreness, with, with connective tissue, with skin, with hair, nails. Women have 50%. Most people don't know it. Women have 50% less collagen than men anyway. So that's why women are more prone to wrinkles and, and aging it as sooner because of that. I think, I think there's probably an evolutionary adaptation of men being in hunter-gatherer societies and, and needing that protection to go out and fight maybe the animals and things like that. That's the only evolutionary adaptation I could think that may have uh, drove that. But we aren't getting those building blocks. And collagen supplementation is a great option outside of just doing crock pots and insta pots and getting good soups and those kind of things back in. Give me your breakdown on collagen and, and your thoughts on it. Well, again, um, collagen is essential. Mm -hmm. It uh, seventy percent of uh, the protein in the body is is from collagen. Okay, and one of the things, like I said, um, when I got into it was because of a fellow named Robert Becker. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, and another fellow was uh, several other people that I got involved with, uh, Knox Gelatin Chemist, uh, was looking at how I can repair, regenerate the body quicker with my patients, with my athletes, how I can get them to perform better and uh, recover. That's the key. It's performance and recovery was my main, you know, function at that period of time with my athletes and my patients. And I started studying in the 80s collagen, okay? And I started learning from uh, people like Robert Becker what collagen does. It is the, it's the network of the body. It's necessary mm -hmm. for everything to function, to it's also necessary for regeneration with mm -hmm. sunlight and light therapy and magnetic therapy. So I applied light and magnetics with collagen in my clinics and with the athletes. And I saw a response, less damaging factors in, in physical performance and recovery was better and uh, enhancement of performance, I've seen results with that, with using collagen. And as you know, collagen is like uh, necessary for all these things to occur. But then I found out that mitochondria, the protein that's stable, uh, uh, that's in, in the mitochondria that needs water to stabilize the protein is predominantly collagen. And when I saw that, I'm saying, whoa, the mitochondria needs collagen uh, protein. It makes collagen protein from the protein that we consume in our body. So I'm going, we're not eating enough collagen foods anymore. We're eating too much lean muscle meats. We, uh, most people are getting away from protein and they're going to plant foods and plant foods People ask me, well, what in the vegetarian world can I do to get more collagen? I said, you can't. It comes from animals. It comes from fish. It comes from chicken. You know, we need the, uh, the foods to make collagen, not from plants. You know, glycine and alanine and proline are the key molecules that collagen has. Yes, you can take it from a synthetic form of proteins, you know. And we need those uh, foods in order to create the problem uh, of making protein in the mitochondria. But if we don't get it, those foods, then we have to take collagen. And collagen is a great conductor. It's a carbon molecule. It's used as a semiconductor in the human body. And Silicon Valley and all these other uh, Facebook and Google, which are using semiconductors for their work, they know that carbon is necessary and collagen is the main carbon in our body. So we need it. And and I want to just do a summary here just for the listeners because I want to give sure. a little background. So we have five major types of food collagen that we eat. All right. So the big ones are going to be one, collagen one, type one, mm -hmm. type three, 
and type five. And then there's a type 10 as well. So just to kind of highlight it, one and three are primarily, you're going to get that from beef, either hide or bone broth. One and three are primarily going to be from beef. One will also have, well, I have some notes here up in front of me that I'm looking at at the same time. Um, one's going to also have bone broth, eggshell as well. Those are going to be mm -hmm. big ones out of the gate. And then type five is going to have eggshell as well. And but one and three are going to be the main big ones that you're going to get, and then ten's going to have a little bit of eggshell. They kind of put that in the multi collagen, and then three, I think, a little bit of fish with the three as well. I had a patient write in about type twelve collagen. That doesn't seem to be a major collagen collagen food source. It seems like it's the the one, three, five, two, and ten. Those are the big five that I'm yeah. seeing in food sources. Thoughts on the on the types of collagen based on food and such. Well, again, one to three is essential for the human body. You know, there's many different collagen types, but they're more difficult to get. Okay. You have to either make it synthetically uh, or nature itself makes it with the consumption of right food and sunlight. It makes different forms of collagen. So we need from food and sun and photosynthesis and electromagnetic fields to make collagen. But in general, uh, when I worked in Knox Gelatin uh, in the 80s, uh, working with the Olympic teams, I wanted to find out what, is, what type is necessary with athletes, you know, performance and patience. And all of them always said your best collagen came from grass fed meat. And that's all I use. I use the yep. best quality grass fed cows I can find. And it's got to be manufactured by non denatured methods, you know. And, and then just to highlight type one collagen, the best sources are beef, bone broth, and eggshell. 90% of all collagen is type one. So beef's going to be a good one. Type two, chicken and bone broth, chicken and bone broth. That's yeah. going to be a little bit less. Type three, again, we go back to beef, bone broth, and fish. Type yeah. one and three are going to be the, the biggest. That's going to be right. organs, blood vessels, structures, muscles. And then we have uh, type five. That's going to be primarily eggs. Eggs and then usually a multi-collagen protein where it usually comes from eggs. And then type 10, that's primarily going to be joints, bones, and that's going to be eggs and chicken again. So those are the big ones just kind of out of the gate. So there's a lot, there's tons and tons of other collagen, but we're talking about food source collagen. Those are right. going to be the best that we're talking about there. Yeah. The reason I, I, I stuck with only grass-fed beef and at, in the early 80s, 90s, I couldn't get that. It wasn't available. Uh, only certain places like in South America can you get grass-fed beef. Uh, Europe, maybe. And then I had to uh, work with companies that would only provide me that kind of source from the United States. And that's how what I'm doing today is working more with the United, uh, American collagen because I'm getting it here. I don't have to travel or ship it from somewhere else and denature it. And I get it done uh, where the animals are naturally getting sunlight. Uh, mm. And that's what makes that's it. Key. Now, chicken collagen, I don't go because I don't know what they're feeding the chicken. Okay. You know, uh, they feed them with corn and soy and grains. So at least I know what I'm getting with uh, grass-fed collagen. And the same thing with fish. Is it farm fish? You know, most of the collagen comes in from farm fish. So you don't know what the environment of the farm farming is. So I, I stay away from that. And again, pork is de uh, uh, has changed so much in the way they feed the pork today. So I don't get any from pork at all because... It's the way they feed it, how they, uh, it's not pasture raised. It's mm -hmm. not outdoors like uh, grass, uh, animals, uh, cows are, you know. So I want to, you know, to me, it's important that I stick with those kind of things, you know. Um, everybody sort of took on, uh, you know, from my original uh, lectures that I gave on collagen, you know, and that's how it evolved itself all over with vital proteins and bulletproof and all that. 
none of them really understood what I understood, that collagen is a semiconductor. It's the mm. wiring of the cells. It is the underground wiring that is in our body that we need to turn everything on. Like, you know, the sun is there, but the sun also uses collagen to start producing the right tools to make the body work and to repair it. And that's the key. Makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So we talk about collagen. The amino acid spectrum of collagen is what? We have primarily glycine. We know glycine is mm -hmm. super important for gut permeability. We know it's a, a key cofactor for glutathione, right? Cysteine right. and glycine are the big ones. You know, glutamine as well, but you get that in muscle meat pretty easily. So we have those big, you know, we have the glutathione precursor in glycine. We have the gut lining and pterocyte support for glycine. We know hydroxyproline and um, proline are big ones as well for gut permeability, for skin, for hair, for nails. Those are the big three. Any other noteworthy amino acids in the collagen spectrum you want to highlight? Well, we, we know proline and lysine are key for bones, you know, and uh, people don't realize that tendons and ligaments, which are necessary for the muscle to perform you know we make muscles we can uh, you know we do resistive exercise but what holds the muscles together are tendons and ligaments and that's where collagen comes in it helps to support and deliver the tendons and ligaments stronger and and helps with their strength and ability to handle the, the uh, you know massive workouts that uh, muscles are being used for, you know. And so that's where the tear happens. It's usually in the ligaments and tendons, a lot of it, you know, ACL in the, uh, you know, in the knees and all that, you know. So uh, if people would eat more collagen or athletes, then they can support less injuries because they have the strength to perform levels that, you know, uh, normally the body is not used to. And that's something we need to do. And why athletes get breakdown faster is because they don't have enough collagen or protein or fats and not enough sun. That's for sure. Indoor lighting, uh, blue light, they're all wearing these blue light headsets now, you know, and what's happening is they're altering the wavelength of the 7.83 hertz, which keeps us grounded to the earth. And that's who we are. So we're damaging our body. It's like a microwave. We put our protein in a microwave. It denatures. It becomes altered. It doesn't have any living tissue anymore. And it's dead tissue. And that's what's happening to our brains today. Everybody's wearing these Bluetooth, which is becoming the worst thing I've ever seen ever. And I see athletes working out indoors with Bluetooth, and they're wondering why they're getting all these muscle injuries. And, and uh, they're getting breakage, like uh, ankle breakage. You know, tibias and fibulas are starting to break down because they're damaging their bodies and they don't have the tools to repair anymore. Mm. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So that you're going to see, you know, if you're performing outdoors, at least you're getting the proper nutrients delivered to the cells and you're functioning without damaging, you know, and you're not creating a damage effect in the brain. And so everybody has to work out with some form of music and Bluetooth, and then they get in from a computer and a screen, and they got to watch their favorite show while they're working on a treadmill or a, 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 you know, a Stairmaster or whatever. I cannot believe that. I, I, it frustrates me to see these people doing this and they think they're getting better by working out. No, they're not. They're getting depressed, anxiety disorder. They're getting 
uh, mental disorders and they're all going to have that problem later on. And if they don't have it now, they're getting it. And the biggest thing I hear from everyone is sleep. They don't have proper good sleep mm. and they don't. And that's because they're blue light damage. And that's because they're doing all these things and working out. They think they're doing everything right and they're not. And this is where the industry is going. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's the high tech, you know, and that's why Steve Jobs didn't make it because he, what he created was the cause of his uh, disease, his well, cancer. Yeah. If you look at Steve Jobs and you study Apple, they were hardcore fruititarians, not even vegans, fruititarians. In the yes. 80s. Hardcore. I mean, and it's not a surprise he eventually developed pancreatic cancer. I mean, the amount of stress that he was putting on his body with probably hundreds and hundreds of grams of fructose per day, even if it was from natural fruit with very little protein and very little fat, that's going to just be an environment, you know, ripe for cancer. Right. No, I that. know. Yeah. Well, I had somebody that asked me to work with him. And first question I asked his agent was what diet is he on? Well, he, uh, he went to a clinic and they put him on a vegetarian diet. I said, I, I can't really work with that because he's missing the tools that provide the sunlight to make energy in a cell and to capture the photosynthesis, which is B12 and all the other necessary yeah. foods. And when I heard that, I said, there's not much I can do for him right now. And then the other thing was because what he created was blue light damage and a frequency of bil a billion cycles per second. You don't, you know, you're accelerating uh, disease by creating a mitochondrial deficiency. And, you know, and every single cell in our body is much stronger than the total sunlight that is being produced. Every single cell in our mitochondria is much stronger than the light that is being produced by the sun. Can you imagine that if we go that, indoors? That seems hard to understand. So you're saying the amount of energy made by your cells is more than the sun total? Yes. You know who discovered that is a guy are, named... Are you talking about like 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 mankind as a total or just one person? That, that, no, that one person. Quite, every every single That just seems amazing to... To, it's to 30 million, yeah, it's 30 million volts that is required by every mitochondria cell. And, this, and it's much stronger than the total sunlight. So the UV light was discovered, uh, how we so modulate. How, how is that not burning us up? How is that not shocking us or burning us up? How are we no, able to harness that without having, a, having an issue? That, that's right. We, uh, the melon helps with all that. Melanin? Melanin? Yeah, yeah, okay. all of that. Yeah, melanin and the uh, Ponzi gene, everything in our body uh, protects us with that ability. And that's why when you go indoors and you create technology indoors and you use technology mm. that has been created indoors, you're zapping that energy from the sun. So you need that uh, UV light to communicate with every single cell. You know who discovered that was Fritz Potts out of Germany, mm -hmm. the photomodulator. He found that we are a UV cell, that every cell needs UV light to communicate. And he was right. And he discovered that the output of the UV light was much stronger than what the sun created. That's crazy. So when we capture every cell, it is so much stronger than the total sunlight. And that's why we're, uh, you know, people, uh, we don't go beyond the age of 100, 200, uh, you know, because we don't have the energy to continue ourselves to work that way. You know, I had a woman that uh, lived to 114 a year and a half, about a year ago from Georgia, Atlanta, is because she was outdoors every single day of her life. She farmed and walked and, and did it naturally and ate very little, but she ate a lot of protein with uh, you know, the right amount of food. 
and, and, you know, fats. And she never really drank much and never smoked at all. So she lived to 114 when I got the re uh, notice from the family. She passed away and all that. I'm going, whoa, you know. But, you know, she, uh, those people were able to capture the sunlight and eat the right foods. I did give her collagen as a supplement. I remember that because she asked, what supplement should I be taking on a daily basis? And I said, collagen with minerals should be fine, you know, and that's all you really need. Wow. And if, so she uh, just, you know, it was on national news also. Woman, 114 from Georgia, passes away. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. So, well, you know, excellent, I, Bern. I mean, I appreciate all the information you're sharing here today. Is there anything else you want to leave with the listeners? Any last bit of information you want to kind of leave on the tip of their head here? Well, you know, uh, I think getting outdoors as much as you can, uh, using what um, EMC Square is all about, what Einstein mm -hmm. really told us, uh, the source of energy comes from the sun. He was the, uh, the one who described that. And we need to do that. You know, we need to get away from the technology world and especially kids. Look at kids today. They're on the cell phone video game and they're all creating problems. We have gender problems. We have uh, all kinds of uh, emotional problems and shootings that are going on, mm -hmm. which when I grew up in the 60s and uh, 50s and 60s, I never heard of those things. It hasn't really happened in those period of times. Now today we're seeing it because of the video games and cell phones. And I walk around and all I see is these kids coming out of going to a coffee shop and they're texting and they're selfing, uh, they're self uh, taking photos of themselves oh, yeah. and sending it to friends and all that. So I think we got to start thinking about all this. Yeah, I agree. I think the, the closer we live to the source food wise, hydration, yeah. sun, stress, sleep, I think the, the, the better off we're going to be. I think the further away we, we go, the, the more disease and the more issues we have. You know, I always tell yeah. patients, old foods don't cause new disease. So <laughs> stripping out fat, stripping out protein, stripping out animal, it's just, no, I mean, quality matters, right? But you got to get closer to the source and how we've kind of truly evolved. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, that makes sense, Byrne. Awesome. We'll put links down below. Uh, Dr. Byrne, freelander.com. Again, um, you know, Byrne helps formulate my collagen, true collagen, excellent collagen support products. Again, love the proteolytic enzymes and, and the high quality grass fed collagen makes it mix well, taste well, and it just provides a lot of bioavailability. So thanks for that, Burn. Anything else? You're welcome. No, I think uh, understanding protein and fats and sun and, you know, what we're doing as a chiropractors and alternative doctors mm -hmm. is the answer to health, you know. You don't need drugs. You don't need medication, you know. Love it. Well, I love it. Very simple, holistic kind of philosophy. I appreciate it, Byrne. Excellent. Well, wonderful chatting with you. Have an awesome day. We'll talk soon. All right. We'll talk. Bye. Thanks. Bye.